Today is Titchfield Thunderbolt Day and James's morning mug of tea, or the mug for the tea, has been chosen accordingly. Hello and happy Wednesday. I'm hiding, kind of hiding in the bushes here because it's windy and I'm trying to, um, oh, insects. That, that's new. Uh, actually, no, maybe I'll turn it around that way. Um, shade. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to avoid, let's back here a bit. That might be a bit better. Right. Happy Wednesday. I'll start this again. <laughs> Hello and happy Wednesday. I'm kind of hiding in the bushes, or at least my camera is, because it's windy today. So I'm trying to find somewhere where not as much wind is going to hit the microphone so you don't get that whooshing sound in the background. And as if on cue, here comes the wind. But I've been inside now for two days. I actually wanted to come out and see the sun on my face and get a bit of vitamin D into my system. Vitamin D, important. Listen to the bird song while we're waiting. Genuinely not sure this is going to work. Um, where was I? Yes, coming out, vitamin D. Mm. Yeah, no, because I've been feeling a bit sluggish and lethargic for the last couple of days, but I've been entirely inside the house. And I'm wondering if vitamin D deprivation is part of it. Um, I did that many years ago, it wasn't fun. This morning I have watched... Do you know what, I'm going to take this inside. side where there is no wind and also no sunshine I can't even remember what I was saying so yes as I was saying earlier I think I was I watched Ballery Towers this morning I watched three episodes of the four and despite not knowing entirely what I thought of it I then found myself really wanting to watch the fourth episode so actually I'm kind of taking that as a as a win the I think the production of it or the storytelling or the, the construction of it, there's something about it that's kind of a bit, feels a bit frothy and a bit superficial. But then again, I'm not the target audience. The uh, writers, I think, have put stuff in which weren't in your books. There's a whole story about Daryl being asked to leave her previous school because she pushed a teacher down the stairs. And I don't remember that being in the books. And I've had this kind of have this chat with a friend of mine who also doesn't remember it being in the books and but she has the books so she's going to check I didn't remember Gwendolyn being such a bully but apparently she is I remember her being a spoiled brat but I don't remember her being a bully and I have a slight issue with the character of Alicia being an American because it just feels too much like a, a cultural stereotype of oh look somebody who's loud and brash and full of full of jokes let's make them American it kind of feels like a bit of stereotyping and possibly you know I don't want to say it's going as far as being racist but it kind of it that's the bit I'm I'm least happy with not her being American but her being American and bold and forthright and outspoken I'm going to carry on watching it because there is something kind of reassuring about it. Maybe it's the simplicity of it being the 50s and or the 50s. I think it was set in the 50s. And life being a simpler time back then. Or maybe just the simplicity of being a schoolgirl and not having to worry about everything that goes with adulthood. By it. So I'm going to watch the rest of it. But I kind of really want to have a copy of the books now so I could go back and reread the books. And there are some things I remember, some things I admit I've had to look up on Wikipedia. 
it also reminds me of a time at primary school where a friend of mine and I were both banned from reading Enid Blyton books for a whole term, which for me was just like, ah, just hideous. Also, both of us cheated. Both of us read one book that term, an Enid Blyton book. So I think I'd read all of the Mallory Towers books, all of the uh, St. Clair's books. I have a feeling there was another series of books that she wrote that I'd read. It wasn't the adventure series and it could have been Five Find Outers and Dog. Genuinely cannot remember. But we had a school library. All of the books were graded from the easiest to the hardest. I think the hardest was green with a black dot. That was that was what I was on when I left primary school. But yeah, both of us were told we are not allowed to read any more Enid Blyton books. We have to have a slightly more variety, uh, varied reading palette. Reading palette, reading list, whatever. Oh, happy days. This afternoon, James has a team meeting. So he's going to miss the first 20 minutes or so of the Titfield Thunderbolt. And it is actually the Titfield Thunderbolt. Yesterday I was being really careful not to say tit, but it is a tit field. I, yeah, I thought it was Titchfield, but it's not. It's Titfield. Titchfield is a real place. It's in Hampshire, I think. Yeah. Yes. But this is not where the, where the film is set. The film was actually filmed around Bath again in the 50s and apparently is in colour who knew I thought it was a black and white but apparently it's colour anyway we've had lunch James watched the first 20 minutes on the DVD so he's got a DVD of all the, the eating comedies he's watched the 20 minute first 20 minutes of it then so I'm going to start watching the Titfield Thunderbolt at the prescribed time 3.25 so I need to be quick here and then he's going to join me when his team meeting's finished trying to think what else I've done today other than go on and sat in the garden and realise it was windy and watch Mallory Towers and this is the favourite bit of my day what's the Channel 5 movie this afternoon today's is Recipe for Danger Vanessa proudly shares all her personal information, selfies and family photos with her online friends and is thrilled to welcome her 10,000th follower first sermon all over again. Yeah. So yes, the BBC put this on earlier than broadcast. So I went to switch it on and I missed the first half hour, which means that James probably will miss most of it because he's still on his meeting, his work meeting. Yeah, just a minute. This is my home. You can't go in there without a warrant. Sorry. This train doesn't leave here without us. Although I do love the special effects. Now I think this all would be done via green screen. But I think at the time it was done by the performers just performing in front of a, a film reel behind them. Cutting edge technology of the day. <laughs> it started half an hour early. Oh. Yeah. All right, so this is the makeup bag I was talking about the other day. My plan is to tip it out all over the floor on the back of an apron. So if there's any mucky bits of um, makeup anywhere, they don't go on the carpet. So let's see, what rubbish have I got in here? And that's what I was looking for. So lipstick pen, yep, yeah, I remember that. That needs to go with that because that's eyeliner, which I'm absolutely rubbish at putting on. Makeup brushes. Still in the packet, so they're nice and clean. Um, eyeliner pack. No, eyeliner. Huh? This is eyeliner two pack, but it's clearly not eyeliner, it's a pencil sharpener. That, that can go because I never wear it. That I'm not sure I've ever worn. Certainly not now. Yep. Lip glosses. Dark lip gloss. Nail files. Need more of them. 
another pencil sharpener, more lip gloss, uh, cuticle remover, really useful in a makeup bag, mascara, clear mascara, I can't remember the last time we used that, blusher and powder brush even though I don't have any powder, and a pair of tweezers, QVS, hmm, yes, no more Robert Smith for me. And of course the eyeshadow leaked everywhere. So good thing I put the, the uh, cloth down. 